What's in my pot? I have absolutely no idea. But I know that Multiforme Cost with Capricorn New here wants to bloom again. I don't understand why. But uh, what I would like to see actually is a new growth. However, hello. Thank you for joining me here. I have some work to do and it is a strange time of year to be doing this in September. But again, the timing is root growth. And here I have my, some of my Epicatlea crosses. This is a full Epidendrum cross, multiforme cross with Capricornu. And here's René Marquez crossed with Dick Biana, working on a new growth. And Epicatlea René Marquez crossed with Dimerandra Emarginata, right here. I already tried to pull the label out because it was root bound, which is great. This is the easy part. Got some weeding to do. But these are all showing signs of root growth. Even though this one has not yet started on a new growth, there are root tips and I want to get ahead of it. They are all now in the pot for over two years and it's time to refresh and rejuvenate. And I thought instead of potting them all up by myself, let's have a look and check the contents of the pots. And if there's anything interesting on a repot, I will definitely throw that in as well. But mainly, what is in their pots? Let's have a look. One would definitely think that this is spring, but it's not. Normally I would have thought I'm doing this around March, April. I guess this is the time of year to be doing this for them. I still have a couple of months left were for it to be warm enough, but let's see. Uh, my repotting, I will not be changing their supports into my white ones because the white ones are more flimsy and these are quite, quite tall canes that they develop. So I'm gonna stick with the contraptions I have in here right now because I have strengthened the wire and it's a much stronger support. Just going to get these guys out of the way and then work with the first Epicat layer cross, which is also Dimarandra emarginata. I have soaked them for a little while. They are super thirsty this time of year. And the pot is rock hard, which is a great sign. And I had a tip from Lynn Brooks. Why don't I step on it and gently turn it with my foot? Um, yeah, not today, Lynn. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous about that. Honestly, I am. I'll just take my time. Wow. This is, this is nice. <laughs> this is a good problem to have. <laughs> it's looking good. If you can see there in the pot, it's looking pretty good. So I'm glad that we are addressing this now because that means that I can create some more space in the pot and thus giving more oxygen to the new roots that are coming in so the orchid doesn't start suffocating itself by its own vigor and the growing method. Inorganic semi-hydro self-watering is not a one-stop shop. It is definitely has to take into consideration how that there is work to be done to maintain the general health of the orchid. Don't worry about how it hurts the hands. <laughs> this is all about maintaining the health of the orchid. But yeah, this squeezing thing is quite painful. Ten minutes later, no, not really. 
I'm still doing real time, but if this takes much longer, I will stop the recording and come back when I've got it out. I try to tip away from the growing roots, but it's not releasing easily. So leave me a comment, please, if watching trying to get an orchid out of the pot is boring and irrelevant, and if I should do jump cuts, or if that's okay, because everybody has a different preference. Personally, when I watch videos like this, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I'll sit through it and I'll watch, but it'd be great to get some feedback if this is of absolutely no interest. I have put a tray underneath my shelf so that I can catch the lecker as it comes out. Wow, you've done well. You've done well. You're in there and you are testing to come out. So if this is the same with all of them, then I will just jump cut to seeing what is in the pot as opposed to how am I gonna get these out of the pot? without breaking the pots, of course. It's always my plan not to break the pots. Ooh. There we go. Microfiber and everything has come out. Let me get my tray back up. How about that for a root system? I like it a lot. So what am I gonna do with this? Bump it up into a bigger pot? Or fiddle around and expose the root system? Thoughts, thoughts. I think I'm going to fiddle around. We haven't done that. We have not fiddled around. This has been recently quite the um, cleanup session of all, well, I'm going through all of my orchids. We haven't, I haven't addressed epidendrums or, and such, but um, I have been bumping up as opposed to cleaning up because I see a root ball like this, it's healthy and I just want to not disturb it as much and get the job done. But as vigorous as these are, I don't want to try and see and do it again next year unless it's gone and tripled in size. I want to be able to not have to do this every year with every orchid, the idea being that they can stay in their pot for two years. So I am going to really go to town on this one. And I shall put a timestamp in for everybody who wants to skip to the next what's in the pot. And then we can, uh, everybody can be happy and watch as they wish and leave me your comments below as to what other preferences and what I should show more of, less of. And I will try and do my best to accommodate all of that. So I am being bold with this because of new root growth. If this was an emergency repot, trust me, that root ball would make me very happy and I would not even bother with it. I would just go and get a bigger pot and fill up around it and hope that whatever emergency repot requirement made me do that works. But in this case, this is awesome. We can see healthy roots for those that like it be destroyed in order to sustain the orchid long term. Which is very, very important for this kind of a setup. There's no need to be timid about it. Semi-hydro is as much work. Well, when it comes to repotting, it is the same amount of work as with any other media. I, on, I strongly, strongly believe that. You have great roots and you're just eager to move it on. One day you have to do what I'm doing right now, regardless. 
regardless. So here's the advantage of or inorganic media. I can stop whenever I wish. I don't have to go and take on the surface that harsh. This is as good as it's going to get. And I'm going to clean out my microfiber because I want to use that again as well. And just remove some of the old roots here because there is no need for that to be in my pot. And then I'm going to wash out that pot and I'm going to tease a little bit more out of the um, sides because I'm not going to take it up. Or maybe I should take it up. Hang on a second. If this is what you do in two years, and I don't want to disturb you next year, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to bring out a bigger pot. But first, I'm taking off all the bottom roots, whether they're good or not. And 80% of them are fabulous nice and crispy as I cut. But this is going to give me another two years of not having to do this again. This also trims off the dead tips. Just a little quick haircut. Not too shabby. The root Figaro has been at work. Well, 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 all fun and games. Let's bump it up. Now in the back of my head, I'm thinking, oh, bigger pot. Here come the warm winter nights. Am I going to be okay with space? My answer is, I think so. I don't know, but I know there were gaps between these three where they live gaps big enough to accommodate a fourth pot. So I'm assuming that I will be able to fit the three in their same location. Again, despite bigger pots. But it is, it is a consideration of mine all the time. It's all nice in the summer. I can just go, okay, bloop, back on the shelf you go. Plenty of room because everybody is spread out. But in the winter, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, lekker. This was not a potting up video, but this is something I haven't done yet. And that's why I'm showing it, that I went after a very healthy root system instead of just bumping it up. And we'll see what the other ones have to offer. In the meantime, it was soaking in the in a nutrient mix, my fertilized water. So I'm keeping it back where the growth are the smallest, really watching for the growth pattern to go forward. And the only thing that's giving me comfort is the fact that I've gone after the root system because look, there is not much space in there already. But the fact that I have trimmed the root system, I shouldn't need to go after this one again in one year. But what I did just do, sneaky, sneaky, behind camera, off camera, is I went after the back end of the root bowl, got the leka out back here to give me some space so that I can push it against the back of the pot. That gives me a little bit more room to play. And because it is so tight, I'm going to thread the support through so that I can push it further back and everything will be just fine. Yes, a few more roots were destroyed in the progress. So instead of leaving them shredded, there we go. All right, and then we fill her up. I can use my old leka, but there's some roots in there because when I pulled her out, some snap. I prefer to just rinse it, clean it up properly, and not worry about that anymore then. Give it some fresh stuff. The other one I can work with later.
as I'm patting, I'm pushing the orchid back right up against the pot. I don't want her to be repositioning herself. So long term, that's good that I've got a tray down there. I keep knocking pebbles. Long term health. Reassured, I think, in this case. I am sure it would have been okay for another year, but why? Why risk it? Roots are growing. This way one can be really aggressive about it and be 100% sure that everything is gonna be okay. Now, I'm not gonna fill her up to the top because I want those roots, if they do not go in, if they don't bury their own way in, which sometimes can happen, I want to be able to fill up with Lekka afterwards. I want that option, I want that choice, so that if the roots are superficial, I will come up with another little bit of Lekka and then they will be in the pot. And then they can climb out if they want to, but you know, for a moment there, we have achieved our purpose. And as I said, normally I like to change to my white supports, but these guys will take over the white supports, which are much more flimsy. They're not as rigid and secure. And this growth is being trained by light. So I have to just make sure that looks like mealybugs. Nope. I just have to make sure that if it doesn't continue to do what it's doing according to the light source, which is from over here, then I have a little support to back it up if need be. But in this case, I'm gonna be okay. When we fill up the reservoir, I don't need to fill up from the top because I have had her soaking. And then we just put the label back where it belongs and she is good to go. Let's move on to the next one. Hands in a bleached rag. Some kind of prevention, I would say. Let's go after Mr. Big here. It's like the first times that I've done cleanups. The root balls have been excellent, especially with my sologeny. And then I take the second sologeny and it was like, as in, not so fast. Not everybody is the same. Ah, a little looser. Yep, it feels a little bit looser. Around this one. So we won't be needing a different pot. But it's not disappointing. Absolutely not disappointing. Only one microfiber in this one. I shall wash out the pot. We are going to reuse this support. Look. That's perfect. That is awesome. I don't have that many active roots as with the other one, that they will come. So I'm going to trim off the bottom of this one as well. And then just pot her up in the same pot again. Yep, I like it. Just want to show what I'm seeing in the middle. And I'm gonna take after this, I'm going to really expose the center. There's some tired roots in here. I might as well take care of them now. So that's what I shall do off camera. And if anybody wants to see this process in the future, please let me know in the comments below and I shall adapt my repotting videos accordingly. But for the time being, I'm just going to guesstimate. I'll take care of it off camera and I'll come back afterward. Here we are. Serve some aeration in there already for another two years, hopefully. Got a little new growth trying over there. And there was one trying over here. 
probably got choked out by a Lekka bead. Maybe it wants to still continue. We'll give it time to think about it. But there we go. I'm just gonna pot it up and leave it be. Oh, and just quickly, this is what I got out from the center. It really doesn't look like much, does it? That doesn't look like a lot, but I, it makes a big difference in the middle there. And some of them were still nice and crunchy and fresh, but needs must, I think it's better this way. Number three. Let's see what you have to offer. Numero tres. Epicatlia Rene Marquez, crossed with Rastavola Dig Biana. How are you feeling loose? You're feeling loose around the girth here. That's okay. It's like I picked the first one and it's always the toughest. And then, whoops, let's do something about this support. It's one of my old ones where I was still tightening everything, which is absolutely no need. My new ones I leave nice and loose, easy access. All right. Oh, beautiful new roots coming. Look at that. Oh my goodness. My heart skips a beat when I see that. Here we go. What have we got? Why were you so stubborn? Oh my goodness, you guys, watch, look at this. Ooh, I'm gonna do some serious cleanup here, but look at what I see. Look at what's poking down through there. Oh, isn't that just a sight for sore eyes? Those big new ones. Woo! It's not just on top, they're going straight through. I'm going to clean this one up pretty radically. And if you want to stay and watch, I am so glad you are. I will put a timestamp up right now as to when we're done. Really going after it here. Wow, with roots like that coming, shoosh, I'm not holding back. This is fun. I have to say, this is fun, seeing them like this and not having to tiptoe around every root. Ooh, I'm having a great time. This one is so bent out of shape, it's coming off. Let's have a look. And even these back ones are still firm, so they're still coming off. Here are the superstars. Oh my word. Superstars. Love it. What do you think, huh? Whoop, happy days. I am bumping the Epicatlea across with Rasavola Digbiana. I'm bumping her up. I think one, one is enough, even though it's bigger. One is enough. Oh wait, no. These are thirsty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have always been thirsty. Now, I just have to be a little bit careful because some of the new roots are growing to the back and with the other candidates, I really pushed hard to get the back of the orchid towards the support. I won't be as radical this time. 
and I'm leaving her a little bit lower because I'm going to have to pull her up so that the lecker can get under the root ball. A little bit of a difference with the other one that I left purposely less lecker in the pot because I want to be able to fill up over the top if the roots don't go in. But this one is purposely on the bottom so I can pull up because of the big massive gap I have left under the root ball. And now, pat and pull, gently. And that should do it. Should do it. Label. There are roots back there. Gotta watch out. And fertilized water. She's done. And I feel so much better. Woo. Yes, sir. That was amazing. Right, here they all are. I noticed some of my moth larvae damage. That is not cool, not cool. But okay, here they are. We saw what was in the pot. Here we did a rejuvenation, despite the fact the root ball was absolutely fine. And we bumped her up a bit and left the orchid a little bit less lecker than we can do in order to make sure the roots go down. And if they don't, then we can fill her up and then practically the roots are in the pot. The big one I just took out of the pot and showed the root growth and potted it up off camera and I bumped it up into a 20 centimeter pot because I don't want to have to deal with it next year either. Really took, went to town on the roots and cleaned her up but I still bumped her up even though she would have fit into her previous pot. I just thought no, look, two more years, thank you very much. And we just did the Cattleya Rene Marquez and have her at the height that I want her. Gorgeous root system, those big, strong, white spears poking out the bottom. I love it. And they're ready to go. They're ready to grow either way. So I just had a few little feedback requests and let me know if you want to see these repotting videos without the jump cuts because you'd like to see them or if I should do them and then leave a timestamp or not do them at all and just do jump cuts. And your feedback is always so much appreciated. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you so very much for watching. Take care, be safe, bye.